Good morning to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It is Saturday, October 19th, 2019. Quick look at what's happening here with Nestor in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, the short answer is not much, and that's obviously very good news. This is the latest from the National Hurricane Center as of their 7 a.m. Central Time Intermediate Advisory. It was moving northeast at 17. Pressure was 996 millibars, and the wind 50 miles per hour, probably all of that out over the open water. And as we look at the forecast over the next several days, the leftovers of Nestor are going to move up into the southeast and bring some impacts with it through this region. The biggest story is actually a positive one, and that is that this is bringing rainfall. And a lot of times we look at rainfall from tropical systems as being a big problem. And I emphasize that a lot. We saw that with Amelda as an example. You know, more than a billion dollar disaster over in southeast Texas was Amelda with all that very heavy rain. Florence last year, heavy rain. Harvey, heavy rain, etc. In this case, this is generally a positive as it is going to have brought rain, is bringing rain to this region through here when all is said and done. Yes, there is a severe weather component. Uh, we've read about and seen the stories about the tornadoes here in the Lakeland area. I get that, and that is certainly a negative impact. But in the grand scheme of things, this will actually end up being a positive event for a good deal of the southeast uh, with the rainfall. So, you know, I try to focus on the positives instead of just negative all the time. And most of the times, tropical cyclones bring pretty negative impacts. We all know that. But in this case, I think the net result will be that this storm system that produced the tropical storm, Nestor, uh, is, you know, not bad when it's all said and done. Uh, the landfall, whatever you want to call it, eventually towards the Florida Panhandle, maybe near Mexico Beach, Panama City area, which is kind of ironic, and certainly it rattles some nerves down there that this was even coming. But do not worry. Things are going to improve very quickly today, and uh, we can see that here on the satellite imagery of the whole Atlantic Basin here, the North Atlantic Basin anyway. Center of circulation, pretty much a naked swirl right over here, just to the southwest of Cape San Blas, Mexico Beach area. Uh, all of the deep convection, what's left of it, is moving in towards the Florida Peninsula, and this entire area of energy here will lift off to the north and east with time, as I just showed you from the Hurricane Center's track map, and it will bring rainfall, severe weather from time to time, a slight risk of that, some wind, you know, scattered power outages, um, you know, low to moderate impacts overall, affecting a lot of people over a large area, but nothing like what we saw last year with Michael. That goes without saying, um, and it's not going to be able to make a comeback. You know, there is no, oh, what if it strengthens a little more? This is done. The dry air, the atmospheric dynamics, etc., cetera, uh, really doing a number on this system, keeping most of the energy in terms of convection on the eastern side. And like I've said here, the net result will be rainfall that was definitely needed, and it's moving out quickly. So tomorrow, uh, for Florida especially, and a good deal of the Carolinas too, the weather is going to be very, very nice uh, once this passes through. A very fast-moving system. I did come down and set up camera systems. This is what they look like in case you've never seen it. This is what we offer to our patrons that support what I do and the entire project as a whole. This is a live look at what I have set up. Not too much in the way of significant impacts. Um, this one is over in St. Mark's. The, uh, the water level was actually higher earlier. It covered the road uh, here in Cedar Key. Just a few waves pounding against the little seawall here. People driving around downtown there. or I don't know. Well, not downtown. The waterfront. Cedar Key is a very nice area. I can't wait to get there sometime on vacation. Um, and if we scroll down... We see here Horseshoe Beach, you know, just a little bit of a light chop. Uh, water levels also coming down. Of course, high tide has come and gone, and so water levels are going to come down anyway. And then this is right over, and I believe someone said on YouTube that this is pronounced Steenhatchee, 
and not Stein Hatchy. You know, just hopefully it is Steen Hatchy and someone's not just playing with me. Uh, nevertheless, it's over the river. Uh, we used this really neat bridge um, attachment that the DOT uses to put signs up. I use them to attach the camera boxes or my weather stations and then you can clamp it right on the bridge and it doesn't leave any marks or it doesn't get in anybody's way. It's really amazing. And again, that was provided by one of our crowdfunding supporters from Raleigh. Uh, Scott up there sent me several of these over the past 10 months and I'm very, very proud to be able to deploy these. You know, this was a good test. Again, staying in shape, so to speak, the technology. This is what I do for a living. It's my job. They're not all going to be catastrophic hurricanes, thank goodness. We couldn't live at the coast if they were. I mean, it goes without saying. So this is what I do. I set up these cameras. I can be in four places at once in this case and see what's going on. Um, and there you go. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. So looking at the broader picture, let me stop this so we can save the bandwidth here at the Hampton Inn and Perry. Um, the broader picture of U.S. impacts here, uh, well, where else would it be? But uh, tornado watch in yellow here is tropical storm warnings in red, some wind advisories up through parts of the southeast. And, you know, gale watch, I think that's what this pinkish color, whatever that is. So, yes, there will be some impacts, but this is not going to be a big time high impact event that being said though we always want to be careful that we don't downplay something too much and people begin to dismiss it if you get caught in one of these heavier rain bands as an example one of these clusters that comes in not so much bands anymore but these clusters you know we have the I-4 corridor that comes down here from Daytona through Orlando over to the Tampa St. Pete area and a lot of people travel that, okay? And so you got to be careful. We saw the tornado last night near Lakeland and these heavy downpours, you got to slow down, you got to be careful and take that seriously. We you know, I'm trying to pump up the benefit here of the rainfall. Yay, we got some rainfall, but if you're driving too fast in that rain, even light rain like what we have up here in the low country of South Carolina and light rain back here in southeast Alabama as an example, light to moderate rainfall on the highway can be a problem so come on i care about you take it easy out there you know let me and i know i'm just asking for it <laughs> when you say stuff like this it's like dude don't say that think about how many hurricanes and tropical storms that i have been in in my 25 years of doing this a lot we're getting close to 60 if you add them all up and i have never and i know you this is where you're going dude shut up I have never hydroplaned and had an accident, and I've been in those storms on purpose. You understand? So just take a page from what I do in my experience. Look at all that rain that's out there, and there's enough of it. Be careful, okay? Um, I want you back to be able to watch these videos in the future. And if you're not able to do so because you had a wreck and were deceased, that does nobody any good, so please be careful out there. Storm Prediction Center, convective outlook here. All of this today here in the southeast associated with Nestor and the energy surrounding that storm system. Slight risk uh, of severe weather uh, throughout the next 24 hours or so. And if we look at the, this is the categorical, if you look at tornado, 5% in the brown there. Uh, I think 2% or so in the green, wind 5% and no hail. Yay, no hail to worry about. So that's today. By the way, I don't just focus only on hurricanes. That's a weird way to say it. I focus on more than just hurricanes. Um, and the severe weather potential starts to ramp up. This is tomorrow, and this is because of the remnants of Nestor. This is probably the tail of the front associated with it and whatnot. This is from a strong mid-latitude storm that's going to potentially create some severe weather in portions of the plains. So just be aware of that. Finally, day three, that shifts into the deep south. So, you know, be aware, all right? This second season 
of severe weather, you get these strong fronts that drop down, the warm, moist air that comes out of the Gulf still, and the battle zone in between of the interaction there could lead to some severe weather over the next few days coming out of the plains into the southeast. All right, so I'm going to slowly wrap things up here. Um, hurricane season in terms of impacts for the United States is for all intents and purposes just about over. I do not have a crystal ball where I can say that between now and November 30th there will be no more impacts. I can't say that. But climatologically speaking, after this time of the month of October and this part of the hurricane season, things typically begin to slack off from a development perspective. So, hurricane season is generally over in terms of impacts. Yeah, there's an outside chance, of course. I will begin to focus more on winter storms. Yes, I do study those, observe those, report on those. I look at that as my off-season training. We have tested equipment over the years that we are using now, generations of it later, in winter storms. And uh, they are the wintertime cousins to hurricanes, oftentimes those big nor'easters. Think about the one that we just had uh, up in New England a, a few days ago. You know, and you drop the temperature 30 degrees and look what happens. You get these big blizzards up there and I'm going to be all over that. We'll use our technology in those events as well. And anything on the high plains uh, to the lower Midwest, you know, Dallas, Oklahoma City, Kansas City, Wichita, um, in that region, you get big, powerful winter storms there. And I want to use some of my technology out there. And in large part, thanks to our crowdfunding with Patreon here and my relationship with the Weather Channel, I am able to do this and bring you the weather in an immersive way that you don't see it otherwise. You know, lots of storm chasers out there, many of whom do a great job, hats off to them, but that one perspective, either through the windshield or through their one camera, kind of limits them. And I'm not besmirching them, I'm just, what I do is different. I want to bring you that immersive, ground level look at what's happening, put you right in the middle of it, explain why it's happening, what the impacts are, and what the bigger picture is. As a geographer, that's what I like to do. So I appreciate you guys being with me throughout another hurricane season. Yes, we still have about six weeks to go, actually less than that, um, and things will start to wind down, but I will continue to go forward as we work on several projects. Real quick, as I sum up things and finish here, a podcast coming up starting in December uh, exclusively on Patreon called Stories from the Hurricane Highway, a weekly podcast series that will be available on Patreon. Then in January, also on Patreon and Amazon Prime Video, a new television-type series called The Hurricane Highway. And that will be a six- to eight-part series, depending on how much I can do, um, going over this past year. So I'm taking the Tracking the Hurricanes films that I've done, those movies that I've made, you know, documentaries over the years, and I'm going to try something different this time and break it down into a series of episodes called The Hurricane Highway. That's coming up in January. Um, each couple of weeks I'll drop a new episode through May and lots more after that, lots more stuff coming up. So... Um, Anyway, it's not like I'm signing off for the year or anything, but acknowledging that the hurricane season is winding down in terms of probable impacts, and I think you know that. So anyhow, it has been awesome having you with me this season, um, watching on YouTube, becoming a patron, interacting on Twitter, other social media. It all adds up, and I appreciate it more than you will ever know. So I'll go out and start rounding up equipment. I do have the live vehicle cam running hopefully it's on youtube as well uh, i'll make sure that it is and once i head out from perry uh, here in uh, florida near the nature coast and pick up all of the gear that i set out yesterday that's also part of the job somebody has to go get it and usually it's me but lately it's been some of you guys that have helped out and you know who you are thank you so much for helping with that uh, i'll handle it this time since i'm already here all right all right, have a great rest of your weekend. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. 
It's awesome to have you on the other side of the screen listening to me and watching what I have with my presentations. I appreciate it. I am Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll have another update for you sometime tomorrow.